Searching for just a sip of mercy, but all I can see ends up being a mirage. Raindrops seem to skip me like rocks. Why am I so easy to leave? Unpicked, unable to speak. Being unheard is the same as being unseen. Wilted and afraid. Regretful. Unaware of habitual harassment, my petals are stained, some, some, some are absent. Check me. Covered in dirt, pretending I hate is more acceptable than admitting I hurt. Wilted and tormented, my torrential tears aren't enough to nourish this thirst. My roots are anchored in the shadow, the sun simply burns my bloodshot eyes and shines a spotlight on the evidence that I'm right. Forgotten. Free may be my only chance to be severed from these roots that showed me. They'll just burn me to make me scurry. Dry skin with spice stirred in a bowl to soothe them and inhale the scent of my remains and recline in their careless domain where I wasn't suitable to grow. I know, I'm not presentable to show. A vase would reject me, lace would likely disrespect me. They never want me to be seen. I'd never be cast for the scene where the girl in love peels back the layers of me, asking my petals to answer her helpful question. Does he love me? Does he love me? However, I can't help but notice the dirt that splashes on me is the same as all the others. So why am I so ashamed of my distressed colors? Wilty and confused. Now intimate with abuse, I felt charmed with the false yet friendly feeling. Almost serene, like a leaf floating gently down the stream alone with my 
thoughts, wishing good dreams would enter me. But I'm starting to see a homecoming, a cheers for the winning team. My jersey that reads misery is no longer an option. Despair has revealed itself as a prison cell, and I seek adoption. I can't cower forever in the mil familiar shade I was planted in. Like a recluse that got caught, entangled in a web she didn't spin again. And again. And again. I need to lean in to the light. Wilted. Blood and molten. Fever is melting the memories my trauma fills. Time lapses, dripping like wax. Petals dance as they gracefully descend, disassembling in the wind until all that's left is a bare stick. Wilted and kneeling, I spent so much time feeling overwhelmed, striving to pick up the fallen petals, prying them off the ground. Desperately trying to rehydrate them, I pulled them together with faux strength, coping, only coping, by coloring them in with leftover paint, hoping, hoping, I pass as a living rose, but it would never last. I'd start itching from the dryness, a rash that resembled shyness, unmasked. I hid my puncture wounds, tucked inside my mind as I continued to collapse, I feared relapse. As I watched, petals I was so attached to fade to black. Wilted and healing. I was left skin and peeling in conditions so cold it took ditching my own protective petals that served as an army with shields as they lowered their smokescreen. It allowed the gardener to mend, settle, and heal my soul. Transplant and expose. Swarmed by thorns, recounting every petal that fell. With each one, a story to tell someone else that he loves me. Never did he love me not. My soul is bought. My ground transformed. My thorns matured into sharpened swords, twisting together, resembling a crown like the one my king wore when the veil so I thought they loved me not, but who were they to save me? I'm redeemed. I'm free. And now with every petal to ever fall again, I'll always be reminded that he does love me. And though the broken pieces still have beauty, the old has passed away. My life may fade, but it will never decay as he resurrects all new petals blooming with his name. Holy. He once prayed in his own garden on the eve of being betrayed and wet with precious crimson grace. Hanging on a tree, his crown sat crooked on his head. The crowd, not knowing he'd sit perfectly on the throne in just a few days, they mispronounced him as dead. Then as petals of sovereign blood evaporated, death evacuated from the grace. And now that same crimson grace fell down on me like rain, watering the flower bed, repainted a wilted rose. Red. That's a great collaboration. Again, let's give it up for London Rain and Jim. Yeah. Wow. How you feel? I'm good. You good? I'm good. I'm I'm a little touched and impacted. My eyes are sweating a little bit. We're okay to sweat here, right? We're okay to sweat from our eyes. That 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 provokes a lot, right? So tell us about the backstory from that and why you wrote that. 
Well, it's kind of a testimonial. It is actually an excerpt from my book, but I rewrote it a little bit for a spoken version. Um, it's personal, but it's also, I think, could apply to anyone. It's just death to life, pretty much, and I use the analogy of a wilted rose. So, also tell us a little bit about why you're here. You're a resident artist here, and you've done some things uh, with Jim. Tell us a little bit about some of the things that you guys have been collaborating on and things you've done here at the collective. Yeah, sure. So we, did, we shot a music video a couple months ago. Um, <laughs> a lot of big crews in the audience. Yeah. Um, and that was awesome. We did all of it here, so when it does come out, and if anybody sees it, every second of it was shot in the studio. Um, so, yeah, that should be out this summer. Awesome. Well, we're going to pull Jim up here after he's done, but I guess the last thing I would ask him, he's still rocking over here. He's, he's done. He says he's done. Jim, you, Jim's done this before, and Jim is a seasoned man at this. So tell us a little bit about what you've done this for and why it's impacting other people throughout the country and how, how it really cultivates um, conversation about things that are very, very important. Yeah, so our desire really here is to walk with people that, that are focused on impact and using their creative gifts and talents to, to have impact and speak life into the world. And so just alignment and community is such a big thing for us. And so, you know, I, I actually, this is probably one of the fastest paintings that I've ever, thank, thank you. Um, had to do on stage. Uh, typically, I travel around the country with a spoken word artist and do a 30 minute painting, which is good. And I'm like looking here, I'm like, oh Lord, that's less than 10 minutes. Oh God. So, anyway, so it's just quick and, but it's to the point. And obviously, it's not a standalone, it's with the, the, the words and it's just, it's emotional and, and it's about restoration and healing and goodness and hope, you know? So, and that's, man, it could be painting anything. I mean, painting butterflies and trees and whatever but man what what about doing artwork that actually reaches in and and touches someone you know that's that's my heart yeah. and i think it did that right let's give them a big round of applause tonight yeah please it's beautiful really beautiful tonight we actually are auctioning those off so what happens typically is those go for like five thousand dollars you know, he's at an event and they do the 30 minute and they're talking about what's really important. Tonight we have some other art that's over there when you walked in. Please do the silent auction. There's a way to write on clipboards what your, your bid is gonna be. There's some amazing provocative art over there as well as this one. It all helps the collective. It helps uh, move this place forward and we'd love to have you have a piece of this place uh, at home. So thank you guys so much. That, that's the way to start, right? Riveting, powerful, 